society today, from my opinion, is very chaotic. It's um, the racial divide, the wealth divide. It's where are we going as a people? It's like we're not getting along. There's really no diversity. It's like a fake diversity. There's a, a fakeness about race. There's a lot of segregation. It's almost like we're way back in the 1930s and the 1940s instead of being the 21st century. Because when you look at, especially with this era of the uh, present president that we have, when you look at the fact that people of color are being attacked just for living in society, not even uh, being acknowledged for the contributions, um, it's almost like there's a, a one race party. It's, it's like in order for America to uh, be as one as, as a facadical uh, belief is thrown out for the entire world, we're not. It's like only one race is the powerful and uh, contributing and the rest of us, we're just here. Um, to not be a pessimistic uh, thinker and try to be optimistic and see your glasses being half full, I would hope so, especially um, concerning my son's generation, which is in the 30s, concerning your generation and younger. I would hope that society would improve and get better, but my mindset personally on that is I don't think it will. Um, I would try to tell them to try to be as positive as they possibly can. Um, try not to upset the apple cart per se like as a person of color where you're antagonized by a racist uh, person to try not to let it get up under your skin and just try to ignore them as much as you possibly could, especially if they were just using words. If they were just using words, just choose to ignore to not hear them. But if they come towards you to threaten you with bodily harm, then you have the means, if you have the means necessary to fight against them, then I suggest that you fight with all your might. What I mean by that is like, if like we're walking down the street and a, a class of you know who pull up alongside us in a car and they start calling us the n-word and blah 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 and the best course of mind to be for me would be don't blurt anything back because you draw it out more so if you can possibly because i've been learning this myself like i've been called the n-word like I told you when I went to the Alamo, like when I was walking. And I just choose, now I choose to try to ignore it as much as I possibly can, you know. And um, like before, I might have hurled something back and then I start, you start to realize maybe you're dealing with a deranged mental mindset and they could turn the car around and come back and then want to fight or throw things or, you know. Because I have had things thrown at me. I've had batteries thrown at me. I've had rocks thrown at me. So that's what I mean by like, you know, your bodily harm is like, they, if it's you, one person, and it's five in a car and they all get out, you know, then in that uh, setting, you need to fight. That's the way I feel. I have alcoholism in my family on both sides. It's like to self-medicate, that's not the way to go. Whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, whether it's prescription drugs, um, basically that's a crutch. Because once 
you come off of the high, you're still uh, subjected to having, you know, your problems still uh, in, in your face. I mean, it's like once you wake up in the morning and you, you got high last night, you got drunk last night, um, well, when you become sober, your problems are still there. They're, they're not, they didn't go anywhere. You didn't, you didn't do anything but abate it for the night. Or like say you're, you're high or you're drunk every day of a, of a week or every day of the month. You're not facing reality. All you're doing is just uh, self-medicating and giving yourself a crutch. And it's not, it's not solving anything, you know, and personally, I can, I can attest to it. Your problems don't go away because you get drunk or you get high either by recreational drugs or, or prescription drugs. They still stay the same. I'm just saying to you. Social media is the downfall of our culture, our society, okay. because that's another thing we're, we're talking. Like you talking about the drugs and the alcohol. Mm -hmm. It's like people use Twitter, they use Facebook. Uh, you know, it's a front, Instagram, and it's like that's used to. You know, I can repeat it basically, but it's used to like. Why do you feel the need? You know, like. Say if I was going on vacation in Hawaii next week, why do I feel the need? I got to take pictures and oh, I'm over here eating the ice cream. Oh, I'm in a bikini. You know, look at me. Because like when I was a child, I was your age. We didn't have all that. So when I went on my vacation, I just went on my damn vacation. If you if you took a picture, you used the camera like that. You didn't have it. Oh, let me pose, cause. I'm here at uh, Waikiki Beach, and I'm eating an ice cream cone, and there's all these surfers behind me. You know what I'm saying? And like, I'm, I'm over, it's over rated, it's redundant too. Like, I'm tired of when people go out to eat, and they're taking pictures of their food. You can't even enjoy it. Like, that's what this man was saying on the news the other day. He was sick of it. He says, I go out with my son, my daughter-in-law, my daughter and my son-in-law, and my wife, and we're all at this nice ambiotic restaurant. We're supposed to be, excuse me, spit flying. We're supposed to be enjoying each other, but my kids got their phones out. My wife got her phone out, and they're taking pictures of the, the food. He said, and back in the day, before all this, when you got served your food, you make sure etiquette-wise, everybody gets uh, served first before you start eating. He said, now it's like, you don't start eating because I gotta take a picture and then I gotta send it to Instagram. See, all of it's an addiction. I mean, Facebook's an addiction. Um, surfing the web is an addiction. Email is an addiction. Um, picking up your phone. It's like sometimes people don't really want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation like we are. So instead of having the one-on-one -on -one conversation, let me pull my phone out and pretend I got an email or pretend um, I'm, on a, I'm, I'm on a phone call and nobody's even on the phone. Like when you walk down the street, people don't want to speak or make eye contact so they look at their phone. The solution, it's very hard to uh, try to figure out what the solution would be because it's dangerous versus when I was a kid versus when you was a kid. The danger was there, but it's even more so now because with all the pedophiles and you can't let your children uh, come over to the park unsupervised without an adult. Uh, they can't even play in the front yard or your backyard of your house. So there really isn't uh, too much of a recourse because the kids, you feel your kids are much safer if they stay indoors and that's where video games come into play because if they stay indoors, you know where they are, you know who's around them. Uh, 
that's where computers and phones come in play because if they stay indoors, you know where they are. But then the, the whole basis that we have a problem with, my opinion in society of this century is with technology is that it's too much of a crutch. It's like nobody really thinks for themselves. It's like when I was growing up, you had encyclopedias, you had dictionaries. It's like now if you want to know something, you don't take the brain power to look it up. You ask Google to look it up. You ask Alexa to give you the answer to your question. And that's where we're becoming dependent, my opinion, and we're becoming very lazy as a society. Because what happens when you can't get to Google or you can't get to Alexa? And then there's, as what most people say are dinosaurs, there's the books over there, there's a dictionary, there's an encyclopedia, but I'm not using it. Or also with the younger generation, I don't even know how to use that. And then the this thing with pop culture, it's like uh, the branding and, and this is what the Kardashians are saying and this is what uh, fashion designers are saying to wear this, to eat this, to be on this diet, to listen to this music, to read this magazine, to read this book. It's also like with the media, it's like what makes it better because one or four people say this is what you should read, this is what you should eat, this is where you should exercise, this is what you should wear. It's the same thing with the rap music. Uh, is it positive or is it negative? It's like most parents, they don't even listen to what their children are listening to. They just hear the beat. They don't really listen to the words. And the words are the, the things that can be constructive. The words are the things that can be the downfall because you don't even know what your children are inputting in their brain. And they're emulating the rappers because it's, it's cool, it's, it's the hip thing to do. You know, if, if Kanye West said uh, slavery was a choice, then I should believe that because Kanye West is an authority, he knows which is not, in my opinion, is not true. A long time ago, people had like a low self-esteem because our peers, our parents, our relatives, you know, you look ugly today, I don't like your outfit, you know, uh, you got a big bump on your face, you know, what's going on? But now it's like even a hundred times more because like you said, the selfies, Instagram, Snapchat, it's like people are so obsessed with themselves. It's like, I gotta take a picture. Like if I go somewhere, stop, take a selfie, stop. I'm in my bathroom, let me take a selfie. Um, you got selfie sticks to enable somebody. You get, the, you get a selfie stick so you can hold your camera just so. And it's gotten to the point where it's like really totally obsessive because like I said earlier with Instagram, it's like, you don't, you know, like too much is being uh, put out there about your vacation. Um, this is where we are. This is what I'm wearing. This is the bikini I have on. Oh, I think I little, look a little fat. Um, this is what we ate for breakfast. This is what we ate for lunch. This is what we ate for dinner. This is what we ate at midnight with room service. And there is a time when you need to stop and enjoy your vacation. Basically, to me, it's almost like a slap in the, uh, President Trump's face because Stormy Daniels was a woman in his past that he had a sexual paid relationship with. And it's like, look at, look at Stormy Daniels. She brought President Trump down to his knees because she exposed, you know, things that he's been doing in his past as a businessman. And that's basically how our society runs. It's like if a person is doing the most damaging things possible, they get praised for it. If a person is doing the most positive uh, things that contribute to our society, whether economical, 
where they're positive in helping people, they don't get awarded for it. And that's just the way, especially here in the United States, and that's the thing that's so sad because the rest of the world, in order to try to make more money or in order to try to become more popular like the United States of America, they think, okay, this is how we have to be also. And that's not true. That's why when you look at our celebrities, they get rewarded, they get paid exorbitant amounts of money, millions of dollars, to make these movies that really don't have any content, that really don't teach anything, and then they go out and they trash uh, a house or they beat up somebody, and then they get awarded. Um, in my opinion, it's always good to read a variety of books. It's like, even pe some people don't agree with me, but I like to read and I have read a bunch of books. Um, I believe it's good to read business books, uh, Warren Buffett's books, um, Bill Gates' books to know the technology world, Steve Jobs', Jobs books. Um, I think you need to like have a variety. It's good to read history books like Napoleon and you know how he was as a general to read uh, Ulysses Grant to know how he was as a general. It's good to read sports books, you know, Michael Jordan as a basketball player, of the trials and tribulations that he had to go through because when he first started playing basketball, he didn't even make the team, you know, he was too short. Um, he got cut from his team, but he took the time to practice, practice, practice until he got so good that they wouldn't pass him up. They wouldn't look at his height. And eventually he grew taller. Um, Michael Phelps is another sports figure who's a swimmer. Michael Phelps went through odds of, you know, being a special ed child and the practice and the putting in the hours. It's like, uh, even the biographies of well-known singers, movie actors, it's good just to, to read their stories because they didn't get, you know, for overnight success. A lot of people think, okay, we see somebody, you know, like Carrie Underwood or Kelly Clarkson and you think, oh, they were on American Idol, that's how they made it. No. Ten years ago, they were singing in some nightclub, you know, day after day, night after night. And then some talent scout came in and gave them a, a helping hand to be able to come into the forward light. That's why they were put on American Idol. They just weren't like people that came in off the street and said, oh, I'm going to audition for American Idol and I'll be famous. They were already singing. We just didn't know they were singing. Um, I would also say like it's good to read uh, psychology books. Mindset by Carol Drick, that's a very good book. It, it breaks down how parents should help their kids and teach them ways to succeed. I own the book. I read it several times. It's like I wish I had it when my son was younger. It's like a book that's basically, it's a guidebook. It tells you how you should teach your kids and and we're in this uh, time in society where parents think, oh, I need to praise my child if they do good in sports. I need to praise my child if they got an A in uh, math. And she teaches that, no, it's not always good to always praise your kids. You need to let your kids know that you're not always going to get an A in math. You're not always going to excel in, in sports or whatever that you do. And that's what one thing I think as a parent, as a former person that was in education, I think it's sad that parents always tell their kids they have to win, especially when they're playing in a sports game. There's always going to be a winner and there's always going to be a loser. And I think you learn something both from being a winner and you learn something from being a loser because failure it teaches you how you can get better and improve. 